Hi everyone, Angus Campbell here. Sunday the 27th of December 2020. Hope you're uh, all having a good Christmas and uh, a healthy one and staying safe. I know most people think uh, Christmas is over on the 27th, but uh, I'm a firm believer of the 12 days of Christmas. So it'll carry on into the new year for me. But anyway, uh, a bit of time to get back into the garage and plough on with the, the fury and to focus on the latest challenge. And that is to um, get the uh, exhaust cam to uh, rotate all the way around because the issue that we've got is that um, both the buckets uh, appear to not be able to um, be depressed all the way down and that might be because when the bucket cavities were machined over at Wards at Rugby's uh, then um, Richard did say that um, although they had to make a special sort of boring tool uh, they weren't able to uh, to bore all the way down to um, the base of the cavity um, and although everything appears to work fine on the inlet cam then on the exhaust cam it, it won't quite turn all the way um, past the the lobe of the cam so what I was intending to do was to uh, take the head off and uh, try and maybe dress the base of the cavities but a couple of people, uh, Gordon and uh, Bob Rogerson, have both suggested that um, the first thing to try, if I've got spare buckets, which I do have, I've got plenty of spare tappet buckets, why not just uh, shave a little off uh, the base of the buckets? Um, it's not going to uh, make any difference at all, probably, to the uh, integrity of the buckets, because we're only talking about a very, very small percentage of the overall length that we're going to shave off you know we're only talking thou probably maybe a maximum of I don't know 20 30 thou of a of the bucket and therefore it's not going to as I say compromise the integrity or maybe introduce uh, any uh, risk of you know wear due to uh, to rocking because um, we're hardly going to be uh, eating into the overall contact surface area of the bucket within the cavity anyway. So that's what um, I'm going to do. And um, I'm, I, pro I probably haven't got the, um, the right tools and equipment and gauges really to measure accurately how much I'm going to need to take off. So I'm going to actually do it, play it sort of by ear really. Um, we'll do a quick estimate first, maybe. But let me uh, think about that. But anyway, yeah, thanks, Gordon and, and Bob. Um, we'll take the cam out and take the buckets out. And we'll just have a, a bit of an inspection and see what we can see. But that's going to be in an, an awful lot easier way to address this rather than take the head off, take the valves out, and also to try and dress the bucket cavities because I haven't really got a tool to do that either that's going to be a bit bit of hit and miss which I don't want to do because we've got to uh, maintain you know the close tolerances of that so we don't you know run the risk of introducing any sort of rocking motion wear on those buckets which which it would be easy to do if we're not careful so yeah thanks again Gordon and Bob let's uh, let's take the cam and the buckets out and have a quick look Right then, to uh, just to remind you that to remove the cams, we've got to take the cam retaining plate out. But to do that, we've got to get the uh, cam chain tensioner out of the way. So uh, the only way we can do that is to um, take out its bottom spindle, and then you twist it 90 degrees and uh, and pull it out with the chain out of the way on the other side. And then we'll be able to uh, pull one cam out more than the other so this is at an angle and it will just will we'll just come out so chain tension out the way 
and then as you can see you can leave one cam in position the other cam will pull out and there's enough room behind the uh, sprockets to be able to uh, pull the retaining plate out at an angle with a cam and out she comes simple as that and then we'll just take the cover off here and then we'll use the magnet just to uh, pull out the the tappet buckets but uh, just to be careful as well that we don't lose the uh, the shim on the other side down into uh, down the side of the the valve spring that's always going to be the risk so let me do that now well they came out um, beautifully actually just put a mag magnet on them and they uh, they uh, slipped out a treat as they say and the uh, the shims are still inside and I was just um, as I was taking them out I was just thinking about this in that um, the exhaust side is where we have the thinnest of shims just to ensure the buckets are, are not sitting on the collets and although we know one valve is slightly pocketed compared to the other on the exhaust side uh, I, I know that on the on the valve that isn't recessed as much we still need a pretty thin shim on that as well which we had to make up so that means potentially the buckets are sitting lower because certainly on one of these buckets as well we we did actually shave a bit off uh, the centre nub there as well so these are probably sitting a bit low which exp explains why then they're not depressing all the way because they're coming to the limit of the uh, the line boring in the bucket cavity um, so that's why I think we've got that slight issue but there's an obvious resolution as Bob and Gordon have said and uh, just measuring up these with the vernier then um, we've got 17 thou over an inch for the right and 16 thou over an inch for the left so uh, initially as I say I'm only going to take probably 20 thou off and we'll try that so we'll take it initially down to an inch and really what are we doing there taking off one percent Yeah, 1%, 10 thou is a hundredth of an inch. Taking off 1 to, to 2% of the overall length, which obviously is less surface area wise, so it's not going to compromise them at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind the base of these on that side. I'm just going to check the drawing as well to see if there should be a little tiny chamfer. I don't think so. There is on the top but not on the bottom edge and um, I'm probably just going to use a, a stone to do it and uh, yeah okay I, I haven't got the tools to, to do it properly to say skim it on a lathe or anything like that I don't have anything like that but to be honest um, if I measure up carefully I should be able to make sure it's pretty equal all the way around but if it's not it doesn't matter you know it doesn't matter if, if this edge doesn't end up entirely square with, with that edge and parallel. It's not going to make much, any difference at all. So uh, that's what I'm going to do now. Um, so we'll get the old oil, oil stone out and we'll give it a go and uh, see where we go. I might have to get a bit more radical if it's uh, going to take a, a long while. Might have to get the grinder out. But that's okay. And, you know, if, if for whatever reason I do actually mess it up, I've got spare buckets and uh, we can just start again. But that, you know, we've just got to be careful. Right, I'll crack on with that and see. We, we, we'll see where, where we get and how long it takes. Right, everyone, you're, uh, you're probably getting sick, sick of the sight of this, uh, of this view because it appears to be the same every time. Um, but be assured that after just the first attempt on 
shaving off 20 thou off the left hand bucket base and after the third attempt and in total about 40 thou off the bottom of the right hand bucket we've managed it. Um, if I put a uh, chain wrench on this now I can turn it turn it over um, so that the valve is fully open and the cam goes through to the other side without much resistance at all other than the pressure of the, uh, the valve spring. So that's good. So next job then is to time up the cams again and I'll be going through the same process as before uh, in that we've got uh, a mark on the crank pinion um, which needs to line up with gears on the idler the idler here in such a way that the sprocket on the idler is in the correct position now there's been quite a bit of um, comment on um, on previous videos thanks for those everyone regarding timing this up and also I've had some dialogue with uh, Richard Porter as well um, so the first thing regarding um, some of the comments um, most of these related to you know getting um, a, a dial gauge or um, you know a degree disc and timing this up by degrees but we, we don't have that the specification in degrees and I didn't think we had any specs at all but we do have some specs actually that Richard pointed out um, in the draft workshop manual sort of marked up but also I've actually found them which I didn't realize in the uh, in the user handbook here so what we've got then here is valve timing tab it set to zero clearance pistons and one piston at top depth center um, inlet valve open uh, 0.125 so that's uh, an eighth of an inch at TDC on one piston and on the other piston the exhaust valve is open 0 0.105 105 thou so we do have that to work to if we want and that'll be a good check once once I've timed up I mean it's a bit of a bloody pain having to set the tappets to zero because that's more shimming and I, I'll need to make shims up but I think what I'm going to do first is time up by eye which we've done before and which I did originally on the on the, on the bandit and that's never been much of a problem um, and then we might try and set up a dial gauge afterwards just to see if we're in, in the right area so back to timing up by I then then the, the, the key thing is the, the cams are easy because with these sprockets if you just one tooth out on these sprockets then the position of these lobes is significantly different so they're relatively straightforward and what we need to ensure is that a tooth lines up with the timing marks on the retaining plate. The key is going to be down here and we know what position to put the crank in because we do have a um, tooth on the crank pinion that is punched so it's going to be that tooth and it's got to line up perfectly equidistantly between two teeth on the idler gear and those two teeth have to be in a relative to posi relative position to a sprocket tooth. Um, I mean, we could be a tooth out either way, uh, and that's what we'll have to experiment with, probably. But initially, I'll be happy if we get it in the, in the right position. We turn the engine over, and um, obviously the the valves and the pistons all all clear one another. And, and I'm pretty confident we can do that. That's not going to be a problem. Thing to bear in mind is with this this timing um, idle opinion which is here there are 
Um, 74 gear teeth, helically cut as you can see, and there are <laughs> 16, is it? I've got, I've forgotten. Eight. Yeah, it's going to be 16 teeth. So, 74 divided by 16 means that these sprocket teeth are going to be in different positions relative to the cut gears. So what we're doing when we're eyeing up is putting it in a position where the the two gears either side of the punch gear on the pinion are in a, in a position that lines up with a sprocket tooth in such a way and you might look at that and think oh well that's just you know directly in in line with um, the punch gear on the crank pinion but it's not it's just to one side if we, if you blow this up so that's what we'll be looking for. So effectively when you look at this, for instance, I mean, some, this, is, this is going to be a little bit difficult to see probably. But you can see with that tooth there, that perfectly lines up with um, a trough, whereas that one doesn't. It's just slightly to one side, and that's what we'll be looking for. And what is it? So um, every four point is it six five? Four point six five cut teeth to a sprocket tooth, something like that. So they are going to be in slightly different positions. So we'll do our best. I mean, they're not going to be a million miles out, whichever one we choose. But we'll try and get the uh, the best that we can. So that's what I'm going to do now. Oh, one last thing is that if the sprocket was 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 marked up, sorry, the idle opinion was marked up correctly, you'd have uh, an A and an R at 90 degrees, and the correct um, punch marks to line up would be equidistant. I think 45 degrees. And I presume the A and the R refer to effectively moving the contact with the crank pinion that way, it advances and that way retards. But other than that, I don't really know the significance of why these are marked up. I'll, I'll ask Richard Porter about that to see if he knows, because these are um, these marked are as per the official factory drawing as well, so they, they would have been stamped up normally. But the other thing that I can't fathom is that on the factory drawing as well it does say that the marks should be added, the punch marks and the uh, digits should be added before the gear is cut so that um, there's no distortion of the gears from the punching. Um, and obviously this is cut and the only mark I can find on this is you can just see a line just there, just to the right of my finger. Can you see that? Now I think that probably just marks the centre line because it's not in the centre in between you know, sprocket teeth. It does line up with one tooth on the gear side, but that's in the wrong position with respect to a sprocket tooth. So. <clears throat> I don't know what that means, but other than that, this is devoid, but it is cut. Both sides. Anyway, we'll never know. Things are just there to tease us. Right, I'll go now and um, time up. And then what we'll do is rotate the motor um, slowly. Make sure we get a full turn with... Um, with no significant resistance um, and also just checking every few degrees with the torch down the uh, spark plug holes to make sure nothing's close to uh, to touching. 
and then once we've done that other jobs are uh, next job is to put the timing bottom timing cover on I am going to polish this up again because it's difficult to see in this light but the finish on that is not good um, so I'm going to get the buffing buffing mop out to do that but we'll need to put that on then and because afterwards then we'll slowly be turning the motor over and um, we'll be looking for oil flowing around the engine up to the top end primarily so um, we'll be taking off the feed pipe at the union at the top here first to see uh, hopefully oil coming out at the top of that and once we see that we'll do that up helps if it's in view doesn't it we'll do that up and then what we'll do is uh, slowly turn the engine over and eventually we should see oil coming out of the drains as well but also with the covers off at the top here we should see uh, oil coming out of the, uh, the small holes on the back side of the cam lobes so uh, that's the sort of order of play uh, a bit of waffling there but hopefully that sort of explains some of the thought considerations from uh, myself uh, Richard Porter and a number of other people as well, Bob Rogerson um, and also Gordon regarding the tappet. So uh, yeah, a bit of a collaborative effort. So thanks uh, to those that uh, have commented just to uh, ensure we've tried to think of all the sort of different angles that we can approach this. Right, uh, leave it with me. I'm going to get the torches out and uh, time up the cams again. Right everyone, it's now, uh, where are we? Wednesday the 30th of December 2020 and um, I'm struggling a little bit here and frowning away. Um, I've got a funny feeling that the timing punch mark on the crankshaft pinion might be wrong because I've timed this up as per the book well not with dial gauges um, but visibly with respect to position of the crankshaft pinion idler pinion and the cams and something's not right. So I've been pondering on this a little while actually. So I've just timed all this up again and triple checked it. And what I'm going to do now is another rotation test. But this time what I'm going to do is more closely monitor the movement of the pistons against the uh, opening and closing of the valves and see if we're getting the right sequence here because I don't think we are. The last time I, I, I did a rotation test it seemed to me as though two valves on one cylinder were opening trying to open at the same time and that's obviously incorrect. So I'm just going to go over it uh, one more time. Uh, I'm rotating the engine very slowly by um, the, the, in the in the right direction by the nut on the um, on the rotor on the right hand side of the engine here. So um, I've just bent the, the uh, tab back so I can get uh, a socket on that nut. Sorry, it's a bit dark on this side, but I'll do that again on now and um, from this position. If I um, I can check the position of the pistons and the movement of the pistons as to whether or not, sorry about the bright light, as to whether or not they're going up and down against the position of the lobes. And we'll see what happens. And then if I think I know what's going on, I'll, uh, I might try and bring it back and, and set you up so you can see the, uh, see the same thing. So let me have a ponder over this now and see where we get. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I, th I think I've cracked this. Um, right, I did a, a, a very slow rotation test. And what I found was that
that in the timing position then that piston the left hand piston when you start rotating from the timing position is coming just coming up to its firing stroke so both the valves are closed which is correct and this piston is, is going down to bottom dead center and then the exhaust valve needs to open which it does begin to do but it's late so what happens is the piston is coming up and coming up and almost well it, it's touching it touches the valve before it closes the exhaust valve but before the in nut valve then opens to obviously set the charge for when the piston starts to descend so I think the, the cams are one sprocket tooth out because the cams need to operate the valves later one sprocket tooth later so what I did was I went back to this side and rotated it backwards on this nut which you can do to the timing mark again which I've done doesn't have to be too accurate but which, which is what I've done so hold still so there is the little punch mark you just see it roughly the right position but the cams are in a different, different position so if you remember when we timed it up before the two notches i.e. that notch there and that notch there were over here so I'm going to these, these cams um, in normal motion rotate clockwise i.e. the opposite direction of the crank because of uh, obviously the idler gear so I'm going to slacken off the chain and I'm going to rotate each cam at least one tooth if not two teeth anti-clockwise we'll do one tooth first but what I did notice as well when I came back this side which you can't see now is the, the cam chain although I, I thought I tensioned it up it was absolutely slack supposed to have an eighth to a quarter of an inch max it had about um, must have been near a half an inch so that's slack too so we found an issue which is great because then we can uh, focus on that so I'm going to retime it now and then we'll uh, we'll do the test again right I've got it I think so can you spot the difference And can you see what was leading me astray? So, first things first, I think at the end of the last clip I said I needed to back the, the exhaust off one tooth. Well, that was wrong. I needed to, do, to move it forward one tooth so that the exhaust valves opened slightly earlier in comparison to the piston coming up to... Um, Uh, coming up from bot bottom dead centre. That's right. Um, so, firstly, I got that the wrong way round. And then, um, what was happening was, I've been, I've retimed this probably four or five times since the last clip. And what was also happening is that when you take the tensioner off and let it drop by uh, undoing its, sorry, spindle screw, then you run the risk of the chain actually coming off the idler sprocket and moving at that end. But if you can see, the, the other thing that you need to be aware of is you know, what I was fooled of by were these notches. And you can see now they're not in the same position, relative position. And that was fooling me as well. So there's a lesson. So anyway, now, so effectively what we've done is 
this cam is in the same position as we timed it originally. This one has moved forward actually one tooth on that sprocket and it's just made all the difference. And um, certainly looking at the valve action now compared to the pistons, it's, it's spot on, it's beautiful. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, obviously the, the next step will be just to see if I can set up a dial gauge just to uh, check the uh, depressions as in the book, which would be the right thing to do. Uh, but anyway, it now turns over beautifully. The valves look spot on to me. Um, they do open quite early because you notice in the book that with the piston at bottom dead center after it's after its firing stroke the valve is already opening the exhaust valve is already opening at bottom dead center and similarly the inlet valve on the other side is already opening at top dead center and that's to get the uh obviously the maximum um well on the exhaust stroke the maximum airflow right from the bottom and on the inlet stroke the maximum airflow in right from the top as far as possible to get a good charge and a good discharge so yeah I'm, I'm chuffed with that now so next thing um, is we'll start to do a bit of an oil test so I'm going to uh, just check the pipe connections on the oil tank I'm going to put a drop of oil in the oil tank and then we'll start running some tests and the first test is before we put the timing cover on which the oil flows through into the end feed on the crank just there then I can't remember which hole it is I think it's one of these two the oil actually flows into the timing cover before it goes into the crank so it comes out of one of these, well, it's got to be that one, which hasn't got a thread on it. it. Comes out of that hole first. So it feeds in through the pump, out through that hole. And then, let's try and line this up properly. I know we've done all this before, but let's, let's do it properly. So it goes that way around. Yeah, that's right. So what it then does is it actually goes into that hole then, cut on the corresponding face. right and that's why we've got a takeoff there for um, oil pressure test if we wanted it and then you can see yeah, it goes into um, a channel at the back there sorry there's a little mess on the dumb bench now I'm trying to get it flat um, just down there in the bottom there you can see a channel where it goes into here and that's your chamber before it goes into the crank there's an oil seal on here uh, there's a spray off to one side to spray the, um, the chain and the, and the idler gear uh, also the worm drive for the pump uh, on this side you've got the pressure relief valve and on this side here, this is your other bearing surface um, for the other end of the idler, idler pinion spindle. That's your support. Right, so yeah, fill the tank, turn it over, oil should come out of here, and then we'll put the timing cover on. And the next thing is we want oil to come out the top of here and then as we keep turning eventually we should start to get oil coming out of there's one 
to, there's a couple on this side, the drains. So that's the plan. So what time is it now? Uh, not too late just yet, so let's see where we get. Right, off we go. Right, we've got, uh, we've got oil flowing. Not quite where I expected it, actually. So I've got that wrong. So that means oil actually goes into that, that hole there. So I've got it the wrong way around. So that's just a takeoff on that side. But that's all right anyway. So, need to block that quick. And we'll get that timing cover on. Right, there's a, uh, a familiar view. Um, it's now New Year's Eve. And um, what I've done in the meantime since the last clip is um, I have uh, put oil in the tank, oil in the bottom of the crankcase, uh, checked around for oil leaks. I've left it overnight last night and it doesn't appear to be pissing out everywhere, which is good. I've begun to uh, turn the motor and prime everything and the um, I've had the oil filter cap off and that it is filling the chamber but um, and also as you can see I've got the um, top nut off on the rev counter drive just so I can check that the, uh, the oil pumps turning uh, with that spindle turning and that's correct and it is so it is slowly priming, uh, but it's not yet beginning to uh, to come out of the uh, pipe union for the feed to the head. And that's because when you're cranking it by hand a quarter of a turn at the time on the rotor nut, the, the pump is rotating very, very slowly. That spindle's very slow. Um, so it's going to take a while to, to prime it a bit more. So... As it's New Year's Eve, I'm, I'm going to leave it there actually for uh, for this video and we'll uh, pick it up in the new year and continue to prime everything up. But the motor is turning over well and since I've been uh, turning it by handing at least getting some oil around it, uh, it is freeing up. It's not so tight as well. Um, but anyway, pretty pleased with that. Been a bit of a long slog getting the cam timing sorted out and a bit of head scratching but I think we're there. And uh, thanks again to uh, to those that have uh, provided comments and suggestions, and, and especially to uh, to Richard Porter for his help in uh, providing images and material uh, from uh, from his fury. So we'll leave it there, and I'll wish everybody a uh, a happy new year, and hopefully uh, it'll be a little different to uh, that to which we experienced um, this year. But I hope you all keep safe. Um, in your uh, well, small bubbles now. We're we're now in tier four here in the UK in the East Midlands, so it's just uh, the family tonight. But at least the the kids are at home, so we'll have a good one. So uh, have a safe New Year, and hopefully, as the vaccine rolls out, things will return to uh, to normal. Um, hopefully, with some semblance of normality by the middle of next year. Anyway, here's hoping. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for your interest, suggestions, comments and subscriptions and I'll see you uh, all again in the new year um, probably in about a week's time or so when uh, we'll have a think about what we want to uh, achieve next year thanks again everyone cheers bye bye